no amount of money, no amount of like status, no amount of anything is worth trading like that excited creative feeling. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing's worth that. Like the point is to feel that way. Yeah. And so that's when I started writing about okay, I wanna have more of a company that puts me and everybody else in that spot. And so I was like, I'll never get in your way. Like I'll never I will never get in your way of doing what you want to do. Appreciate it, bro. This time we actually know what the heck we're doing as a company, which is exciting. So we're planning all that out, getting everybody on the same page, getting total buy-in, and uh, setting the strategy. John! Welcome! Hi. Good to see you, man. Come on in. Good to be seen. Sean's here, everybody! Y'all should be freaking out! <laughs> good, how are you? I'm good. This, this is Adriana, all the Hi. way from Romania. Nice to meet you. Thank you. And of course, Hi. hey. Nice to meet you. You too. And Melinda will be here in a minute. How are you? Good. We're so bad. We've been sitting a while, but. <laughs> yeah, you can't be coming from Mississippi. Not, today. Well, yes, yeah, today, yes. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, but yesterday, sir. Like, so 16 hours in the last 20 hours of driving? Well, will you, will, no one will be offended if you stay in a little while. Yeah, I'll probably stay in a little while. <laughs> All right, <cool. laughs> Yeah, definitely. So. Well, uh, we've been we've been bragging about you for last week or so. All right. So you're uh, the mysterious person that everybody's excited to meet. Better, get some better step up. And, and, and uh, this is the guy who'll put you all over social media. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've been trying to start following everybody so we, I can figure out. Oh, we noticed, Sean. Yeah. We noticed. <laughs> you know, like, Sean knows things about me I never tell anyone. <laughs> I gotta, I it makes you a good copywriter. That's right. Research. Yeah. Um, Research stalking. Ethical yeah. stalking. Yeah, it's, it's very fine line there. <laughs> <laughs> thing that drew me to this guy, actually you reached out to me, but what we were looking for in the marketing, in a marketing lead was somebody who came in with a Super Bowl ring, said, you guys want to see how to win? All right, get out of my way. Um, so that was basically the decision to bring this guy on. How many Super Bowl rings do you have? I mean, <laughs> I don't know how you, how you want to, <laughs> how do you want to define that? Million dollar promotions? Like, I don't know. Sure. How many million dollar promotions do you have? I don't know, probably six, eight, I don't know, something mm -hmm. like that. A lot of rings. Yeah. 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 Run out of fingers. <laughs> <laughs> you have to leave them at home in the, in the box, the display box. So one, one thing, uh, like the expectation was, you know how to win, come try us to win, nobody will get in your way. Yep, I like yeah, it. We're stoked to have you. Love it. So I want the two of you to get some face time. Tyler is our audience manager. What are you talking a little bit about? Yeah. Uh, what the heck you do? Yeah, what do you do? <laughs> Number one, where does our community live? Where, besides me sending emails, where are our people? Do you mean as in like what kind of platform, like what social media? Or? How do how do we communicate with our community? Like our people. people. Mm -hmm. I for a while it was kind of like in the live comments of wine with wine, mm -hmm. kind of. Mm -hmm. But where where's our people and how do we centralize them? When it was the tribe, it was the Facebook group. Mm -hmm. Right now we don't have any community. So we're a little soulless in that regard. Yeah. Number two, what values do we stand for and against? In the customers we serve, in the people we bring on, what values are we for and against? Number three, how do we actively cultivate a more responsive audience? What content do we prioritize? We have a lot of different content ideas, a lot of things we could do. How do we actively cultivate that audience and what content do we prioritize? Which one, what's, what becomes a goal this quarter rather than an idea filed away? Number four, in terms of product, between workshops, the 1%, the tribe, the back room, new products, 
what should our marketing calendar look like this mm -hmm. quarter? <clears throat> Number six, what are we not doing right now that's leaving a hole in the vision? Can you say that again? What are we not doing right now that is leaving a hole in the vision? And finally, what cause do we support long term? So these are questions that I want to have addressed before we finish up tomorrow. But we don't need to dive into each one of them right now. But this might serve as a guide for what we decide to prioritize. Our end game is simple, to have an audience so responsive that we can take any business to new heights. When we promote products, people, or brands, we impact them by leveraging our audience and our network. Every relationship that we foster, every customer that we take under our wing, and every video that we release exists to make this end game a reality. We are here to bring exciting businesses in front of an audience, just like Shark Tank. As a result, these businesses become the next Scrub Daddy, Mizzen in Maine, Lead Pages, Viral Launch, Click Funnels, Squatty Potty, Four Sigmatic, and Dollar Shave Club of their kind. To do this, we continually cultivate a responsive audience of high achievers we maintain a pipeline of deal flow as we empower emerging entrepreneurs. Drew, you're up. Uh, our purpose and mission in a sentence capitalism.com creates that con <coughs> creates content that helps entrepreneurs build businesses and invest the profits. In a paragraph, capitalism.com empowers entrepreneurs to create the change they want to see in their world. We do this by creating content that helps them build businesses, invest the profits, and expand their personal freedom. We help them to find the change that they want to create and give them the strategies to make it happen. We connect them with opportunities to help them make it real and get, we give them the platform to bring it to the world. Tyler. Capitalism.com is a media property. Our queen bee activity is to create and spread content for entrepreneurs to help them expand personal freedom. We use shareable pieces of content to create raving fans, cultivate responsive leads, and generate profitable sales. Our videos, articles, and podcasts are distributed to over a million people each, and our winners get seen by tens of millions. Our audience brings awareness to ideas, causes, and businesses that we want to support so it serves as the first domino to create the change that we wish to create in the world. Melinda. We feature a variety of shows and personalities on our podcast network, and contributors line up in hopes of being featured. Our art articles feature success stories from our community, and we highlight entrepreneurs who are actively making a difference in the world. Our videos go viral on social media and are voluntarily shared by other audiences. Since our audience is made up of high achievers, a piece of content can attract investors, influencers, customers to a to, and customers to a brand. In this way, we create the change for those who create the change. Uh, so here's, here's what I'm going for here. I, I want there to be an actual community around capitalism.com. Mm -hmm. Not like a per level. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, a per program. What, what, what I would like to see is when Someone in the group takes a lesson that they applied from the naked puts training They're like hey, I, s I saw this yep. trade set up here What do you guys think and half people are like oh, yeah that's, that, Like I like these numbers here and somebody else is like what the hell is a naked put? Hmm. <laughs> yep. And then somebody else is like oh, it's one of the lessons, lessons in there right and and so you have you have like an actual community in that sense rather than it being this group versus this group and i get it it just becomes it's one of those things like we like we read yesterday in clockwork the more variations you have the more your focus is divided rather than building up one thing that you're just super proud of and i'd be open to changing later but to just come out and be like let's have multiple groups like and that's that that just sounds like a and i will say take, i mean they've had 25 people on our team on you know different levels full-time part-time and Everybody was in there managing, yeah. alerting to like Tossy Cats and people pitching and you know all that stuff in there.
the thing was I felt like I still had to kind of drive the ship. Yeah. And I'm really trying to let the team drive the ship and make the decisions. So uh, that was good for me to see you do that. Really? More so than ever. Yeah. How do you mean? Well, almost with everyone, you're like, I don't want to tell you guys what to do. Yeah. Like when we were talking podcasts and stuff specifically, I was like, you guys decide. <laughs> I just want to make content. I just want to. Yeah. I just want to make. I just want to make cool things. I think that the the tricky thing is like. Just, it's not a bad thing. People feel on the spot, especially with the new people, when it's like, okay, we can decide, but here and now, like in this moment, in this instant, I where see. I feel like we're committing to the next three I months, see. like right now, I and see. if we say the wrong thing, we can't take it back or change, but of course we can. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess. I mean, in the past, you've seen this, like, I make decisions and go, and then we figure it out. Yeah. It's just like, well, decision, let's test it. We'll make a different decision later. So what I was hoping was that somebody on the team would be like, well, we'll do this and we'll test this. Let's go, we'll figure it out. Yeah. Like, uh, great, now I can make content and give it to you and the filter through which you're gonna test and iterate from there. So that was the, that was hard for me to like, but maybe I just need to set that expectation for the team a little bit better of what I need in order to feel freed up and not get in your way is I need to hear what the decision is for your role in your department and how we're going to operate. Yeah, and you're yeah. welcome to change it at any time because I trust you to be better and smarter at it than me. Yep. And I'll go make content and I'll never ask you to make content. <laughs> so how is the company different or am I, how no, am I you. different? Like how personally, um, because there's so much that's happened between the first F12 2 and this Capcom. So you've changed as a person, the company has changed. Um, so like, I guess reflecting back on who you were then, where you were business-wise compared to now, like, like how do you feel about that? So you said something interesting like three months ago, where you're like, it took me about a year of working with Ryan to realize he doesn't know what the hell he's doing. <laughs> And I think the biggest shift has been after you've done the events that we've done, you realize nobody has anything figured out. And so I, I think the biggest way I slash the company is different, really how I'm different, is you just realize everybody's got junk, everybody has their own stuff, and we're all figuring it out. So you can build whatever you want, and no one cares what you're doing. And that, like, gives you permission, I think, to just be whoever you want to be, and you can build whatever you want to build. It doesn't have to be, like, I was trying to do it the way everybody else was, it would give me, it would make me feel good about myself, and now you just realize none of that matters, and nobody knows what they're doing, so you might as well just do what you want. So you just feel more um, ready to, to do that, to step into that? Um, do what I want to do and not worry about what everybody else thinks I should be doing or do things like everyone else is doing? I feel a lot clearer on what the heck I want. Yeah. And there's less attachment to like it going how you want. It's like if it all goes away, I, I know one really cares. I, we're all just figuring this out. It's not like a tenseness around it anymore. And uh, I'm way more relaxed for this Capcom than the first one because I don't feel, I don't feel like it has to do anything. Like you just put on a great event for people and let them have an amazing experience and you don't need anything from it. If you don't need anything from it, then it can be whatever it's going to be. But you, but you know it's going to be more amazing because you're not trying to force anything to happen. Yeah, I've seen you relax and do that. Letting things happen as they happen, but also doing it in a way that works for you and coming from it from a place where you want to do it, what lights you up and feels good and is beneficial to other people, but I think it's coming from a place of, of where you need to be and what you need to be doing. Chris, when, when we were in, uh, we were in Ukraine actually. Yeah. And we were in Ukraine, and we were at that resort. I remember having this feeling of like being so jazzed and so energized and so creative, and like we produced so much. And I was like, no amount of money 
no amount of like status, no amount of anything is worth trading like that excited creative feeling. Nothing, yeah. nothing's worth that. Like, the point is to feel that way. Yeah. And so that's when I started writing about, okay, I want to have more of a company that puts me and everybody else in that spot. So I was like, I'll never get in your way. Like, I'll never, I will never get in your way of doing what you want to do. Appreciate it, bro. And it's that same idea of like, create what lights you up. And when they align, that's when magic happens. I think anyway. <laughs>